Hey guys, and welcome to another video. I wanted to talk to you today about nutrition and more specifically, give you some basic guidelines to start implementing in your eating routine that's gonna give you long-term success and sustainability with your eating plan. Now, first and foremost, I wanted to talk about your food choices and what they should be. Now, I gave you a nutrition guide PDF to download and look over. In that guide, I broke down sources of food. So I broke it down, protein, carbs, and fats, and kind of what your best choices are uh, in each one of those categories. And there's, and there's a lot in there. So if you don't like chicken, you can focus on eating turkey or salmon, whatever, for a vegetarian, you know, a list of the, the different options there. So whatever you like, it's probably there. Those are the, four, the food choices you need to, to consistently make. But these choices I gave in those guide, in this guide, they're nutrient dense. So this means they're minimally processed by man. They really haven't been manipulated. It's not some lean cuisine frozen dinner that is just loaded with a bunch of crap. It's loaded with a ton of vitamins and minerals, a lot of just nutritional value. And that's what the bulk of your diet needs to consist of, around 80 to 90% of your food sources or food choices are coming from these sources. The other 10 to 20 percent are your favorite foods. You know, sprinkle those in from time to time. But the bulk of your diet, 80, 90 percent coming from nutrient dense sources. Now, that being said, three things we need to talk about today on what you need to start doing with your eating plan, no matter what your food choices are from the, uh, the, the list that we gave in the guide. So number one, this is the biggie. Plan, prepare, and be proactive. Now, this is a mindset thing, kind of a big picture here on really it means what am I going to eat for this upcoming day? So whether you get up in the morning, you start thinking, okay, this is my breakfast, this is my lunch, this is my dinner, these are what I'm half for my snacks, or maybe you start planning the night before. Whatever the case may be, you always got to kind of stay a, a few steps ahead of the game here and just map out what you're gonna eat for the day. When a lot of people fall off the wagon, as I call it, and they just totally get off plan with their, their eating, you know, they go through the drive-through, or you know, they have a moment of weakness and they, they order pizza, a lot of this goes back to poor planning and poor preparation on their part, whether they didn't have enough groceries in the house, they, you know, they got trapped at the last second, they, you know, they're running kids around a soccer practice and it was late and they didn't have anything made or prepared at home, so they ran through the drive-thru. A lot of it goes back to lack of planning. So if you have the mindset and awareness of what you're gonna eat for the upcoming day, you're always gonna have you know, these groceries in the house. You're gonna make sure you go to the grocery store once or twice a week and always have the, the necessary ingredients to, to have things uh, to cook with. Uh, the second thing is, you know, when you plan and prepare, uh, a recommendation I make with clients is that if you get a calendar, okay, start mapping out the meals you have trouble with staying consistent on. So what I mean is, if your dinner, if you struggle with dinner and finding good, good things for dinner, get the calendar, map out what you're gonna have for dinner each night, and have all the necessary ingredients. So if Monday you have salmon and and asparagus with some rice, cool. Tuesday you have homemade tacos. Wednesday, you know, so on and so on. That makes life so much easier when you have that plan in place. You're good, more likely going to stick to the plan. Then you start becoming more and more consistent. All right. So plan, prepare, and be proactive. The second thing is your actual food content in the breakdown. What I mean is each meal needs to be based around a protein source. So if it's breakfast in the morning, you know, have eggs, you have maybe Greek yogurt, you, or you do a, a shake with an extra protein powder, scoops of protein powder in it. Base it around a protein source. 20 to 30 grams per meal is a good, uh, good start. If you're a little bit bigger like me, uh, you know, bigger guys, you can have, you know, 50 to 60 grams. That's okay. Uh, protein is going to help you stay full. It gives you a satiety effect. So you're fuller longer. You know, you don't get these dips in hunger. You don't get these cravings. Uh, a lot of that will be curbed um, when your appetite, you know, comes down because you're fuller. The second thing protein helps you with is rebuilding tissue. You know, you strength train, you break down muscle fibers. The protein is the good stuff that helps you recover. So base each meal around a protein source. Don't just eat popcorn and drink wine for dinner. If you want to have that stuff, that's okay. But first and foremost, have a protein source ahead of time. And if you're still hungry or still want to have a little bit of a treat, then you're good to go. So number two, protein. Number three goes back to making your food taste better. 
Now, a lot of people think that when they're on a fat loss diet plan or, or, or you know, fat loss protocol with their nutrition, they think and they associate the food they eat with blandness. You know, you got to eat boiled chicken with broccoli and, and a plain potato. You can't use any seasoning or butter or sauces. That's totally not true. A big thing I like to include in my eating are seasonings. This is Chef Milton's brand. Um, this is the Smoked Atlantic Sea Salt Pepper Melange. You can get this online from his website, I believe. Uh, Market Street has it, and I got this at a local place here in Dallas. Uh, these are about seven bucks a piece. I'm pretty liberal with my salt use on my vegetables. This, this one right here I use on most of my vegetables. There's uh, two others I use for my meats, chicken or fish, uh, steaks, whatever the case may be. It's just a different flavor. There's 10 or 12 different flavors, but it'll last me a couple months. And yeah, it makes food taste better. And I feel that when you cook stuff a certain way, whether you grill it or you know prepare a little bit differently than just you know microwaving it or, or boiling it just in a boring manner, when you cook it to taste better, when you season it to taste better, you're going to have less cravings. You're going to stick on plan more consistently. You know, you're not going to be oh, I'm tired of eating chicken again or I'm tired of eating you know this boring food then you have that craving to order something bad or order the pizza whatever the case may be so season it with the salt there's tons of different spices you can use out there another thing I do is I squeeze a lot of lime juice uh, a lot of citrus juice on things lemon or lime it gives it a little bit of a juicier flavor the taste is a little better but also you're getting a lot of vitamin C um, from fresh citrus Another thing you could do with your meals and your recipes is always kind of introduce new things so you don't get burned out. Uh, an app I use is called Fitman Cook. I don't have any association with Kevin who owns the company. He's, he's based out of here in Dallas, but I found him on Facebook and he has around, I think a million followers on Instagram, so he's pretty big time. But all of his videos he posts, you know, all of his recipes he has in the app, they're super easy to follow for the most part. They're pretty simple and straightforward and they taste delicious. That's the main thing. And the, most of them are higher protein. They're fitness minded recipes. They're for dudes who work out and they, you know, they work out and they want to cook better. So Fit Men Cook, um, it's about, I think $3 on iTunes. I don't know if it's for Android yet. I know they have it for Mac, but, um, yeah, guys, download that app. That's a good source. I know there's over 200 recipes uh, currently. There might be more now. And he breaks it down, you know, high protein recipes, breakfast recipes, fish, all that good stuff. So he does has a bunch of different categories. So recap everything. Plan, prepare, be proactive. That mindset, what am I going to have for this upcoming day? Don't set traps for yourself to where you get caught and you're like, oh, my God, I don't know what to eat. I got to swing through the drive through That's the biggie. Second thing base each meal around a protein source. And if you can throw a vegetable in there, forgot to mention, that's even better. Vegetables, more vitamins and minerals, and fiber to keep you fuller. Last thing, make your food taste better. Better food, you'll have less cravings, you'll be less hungry, and it's just good overall. Now, on an ending note, okay, the best diet out there is the one you can adhere to. So think about that. There's no one-size-fits-all approach here except the diet that works best for you is the one you can adhere to, all right? Let me know how it goes, guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.